armed persons attacked a train station in Edo State, the southern part of Nigeria, and kidnapped many passengers. Now, the spokesperson of the police in the state, Chidi Nwabuzo, said the gunmen were armed with AK-47 rifles. He said the exact number of the people kidnapped could not be ascertained. Meanwhile, the Edo State Commissioner for Communication and Orientation, Chris Nekihare, uh, had uh, hinted that out of 32 passengers kidnapped, one managed to escape and a suspect had been arrested by the police. According to him, the police, in collaboration with vigilante and hunters, had started combing the bush for a lead into the kidnappers' den. Well, joining us uh, this evening to discuss is Kalawale Johnson, and he is a communications expert and a public affairs analyst. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thank you. Great. I wish that we had this conversation on a better note, but unfortunately, uh, I can't say I can't say that. But this is happening um, ten months after bandits had kidnapped. Um, people from a train that was on the Kaduna, um, Abuja Kaduna Trail um, r corridor. Um, and, and we know how long it took for those people to be rescued. Half, if not all of them, had to find ways to pay for their ransom so that they could be rescued uh, from the kidnappers' den. And, uh, and while we were um, still pushing for these people to be released, the government had a deal with a terrorist, flew his wife. Um, to some place safe with taxpayers' monies and allowed for this man's wife to give birth safely, hoping that he would keep to their gentleman's agreement, but that wasn't the case. And then the government came out to tell us that, um, you know, they were played by these terrorists. So here we are again, almost the exact same thing has happened, but this time very close to, you know, the South here. Um, what does this say about our security and, of course, us learning from past experiences? Uh, what is very easy at this point is to cast a spashion either on the government or the security agents. I think at this point it is just good for us to to uh, uh, to focus as a nation on how to end this disaster. Uh, these monsters uh, are pretty hard to fight because this is not the usual. Is you know it's not they hide among us. They move around, you know. Uh, at times in cities they get information. So this it's it's not a clear cut war where you have the opponent on the other end and you're here in, and you're at one end trying to tackle them. So it's quite a tough, a very tough situation. And and you know, world over, some countries, you know, exposed countries are grappling with different issues, insecurity issues. As 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 is 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 turning, you know, as has got into this disappointment level because the government uh, failed to act at the right time. So that is what uh, 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 will be, you know, will lay this blame on the doorstep of the government. However, at the root of this are different, you know, factors. If you look at the indices, uh, many of these people who are they, you know, previous research. If you look at them and we use data to judge. You understand that quite a number of things, you know, contributed to this, you know, before now. But these people are already on us, and they are happening to all of us. And first, when this started in some areas, you know, then up north, I remember, of course, you can you can still Google and play some of my, you know, videos, interviews, you know, you know, rich talk. I told people then that I was shouting that what is happening in a part of the country that we. That, you know, we, tend, we didn't see it as a big deal to all of us. So this will be a national breakfast at some point if you fail to act. Why? Why did I say that? The fact is simple. In, in, in the rules of managing crisis, when you don't manage issues at the right time, they dovetail into crisis. And this happened because, sorry, hold on, please. This, this you know, this it got to this point because we refuse to, you know, to approach the issue and to recompense actions. I mean, actions with equal and opposite reactions. So they grew to become monsters, and now they are everywhere, including the South. It is not just that this is happening maybe somewhere close. This is the heart of the South, you know, and those states, they are here with us. And unfortunately, these guys understand the forest 
so much that uh, I doubt if even the owners of the land would even understand the nooks and crannies of the forest like these guys. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this is telling on the security agencies. And whether you'd like it or not, it is stretching them. It is also stretching our resources because the resources that should be going into, you know, providing infrastructures, welfare for the people, well, you know, we have to use it to secure because we don't have a choice. So what is he saying on the security architecture of the country? Permit that expression, please. Mm. Is that we have dangers on our hand. And the earlier, if I notice the earlier, we need to devise different strategies to tackle these people, especially at a time that people will be vulnerable, moving from one place to another, you know, I mean, to other during the election. So mm. it is telling on the security, you know, system of the country that we need to do much more better. Enough of, oh, I have directed, oh, uh, oh, oh you know, all those, all those, all those directives. When each of these things happen, when you see these incidents, what happens each time is you have, you know, uh, you have the chiefs, our security chiefs, they go to the villa, and after that, we just have some few things, and that's all. Kaduna Abuja train attack is still very fresh in the memory. You know what happened. At some point, we could not even ascertain the number of people you know, you know, that got kidnapped. Even after, even after the numbers were coming out, you saw racketeering in the process. And that, again, people are to pay through their nose to get themselves out of the custody of these criminals. And please, make no mistake about this. This is in, people are getting impoverished by this. Let me cite an example of a man that a daughter was kidnapped. Maybe a daughter or a son was kidnapped some times ago. Now, the man sold the only surviving house that he got from his pension, you know, that he got. And he sold it to get, uh, 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 to pay ransom. And unfortunately, the daughter still died. So what do you want to be the state of that man? So this is telling on, not just on the security agencies. It is also telling on Nigerians that we can no longer move freely, especially when you know that you know, you can't just depend on road system alone. The train is what we most, you know, uh, uh, encourage the people to use. But not when you have the train stations, you know, inside bushes. But this particular one is about, you know, it's, 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 it's not in the town, you know, it's in the bush. And unfortunately, you don't have the place secured. Regard, you know, despite the assurance from, you know, from the government that we have our train stations secured now, it appears we are not learning from experiences. The place is not secure. These guys came into the train. Of course, they know the train would arrive like you know, 5 p.m. They came there like 20 minutes before, and they laid ambush and took everyone away. Why was there no security presence in that area? One, we are not learning from experiences. Two, we are vulnerable. Three, we are not devising strategies to arrest this situation. Uh, I'd just like to put it out there. The chief security officer for the train station was also kidnapped, just so you know. Um, and that means that even if there was one person who was armed to secure the people, he too was also kidnapped. But let's move away from that. Let, let's talk about the general insecurity that we have for a government. Uh, and you've said that, you know, it's not a blame game. No, it's not a blame game. But then the number one duty of our government is, is to protect lives and property. And if under the Buhari administration, an administration that promised us to put an end to insecurity and decimate Boko Haram, um, a few months to the end of that government, I'd just also like to intimate you that from the beginning of 2022, what we had was mayhem, kidnappings, massacres. And here we are again in January of 2023, another mass kidnapping. So I'm wondering to myself, for a government that put um, this as one of the things that they rolled into governments with, um, you know, what should we be remembering them for? And then, and then what's the fate of the average Nigerian who, of course, has realized that if they're taken by these kidnappers or terrorists, um, they're left there at their own risk. They have to find a way, or their family members on the outside have to find a way to get them out. Where does government come in? What is the role of government? You talked about the fact that we always don't learn from the past. Why are we so reactionary? And, and when will it end? Well, it will end when we decide to end it. See, I, I, I give some background on why, on why these people, you know, of course, they have mental force. 
at some point, you know, at the beginning, at the next year, when they got my kids. Yeah. Uh, uh, at that time, I think, yes, in 2015, 16, you see a drastic drop in the level of attack because they bombarded uh, the Sambiso forest and things were done. But these guys migrated and they went to, you know, the part of the middle belt and some you know, and some areas, maybe not west a little bit. As of that time, they became, you know, we, 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 we were seeing what, what, what we call or describe as famous headers uh, clashes. I don't understand why a man will sit, I mean, will be in his own farm. You come there to attack him. Your bond is, I mean, you even move from the farm to bond, you know, the villages. And you call that uh, 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 farmers' headers clashes. Remember, it was, it was a government spokesperson. If I remember, Garba Shale, that helped us, you know, that designed that that way. They gave them the name. That was, that was a subtle way of... Of you know, you know, of romancing these guys, of encouraging them. Whatsoever you feel to see, at some point, I've said this over and again. Governance cannot be a popularity contest. Mm -hmm. You there will be hard decisions to take, whether these people are, are of your household or not. Regardless, what must be done must be done. Else, the consequences will be there for all of us to bear. And unfortunately, Nigerians are bearing these consequences, you know, much more than those in government today. The food crisis you have in Nigeria, you know, has little to do with the global, you know, yes, you know, the global crisis. It is much more about us. People that should be providing food for Nigeria, the food basket of the nation. But those farmers are today residents of, you know, IDB camps. So they, they are no longer in the farm. We are not producing as much as we're producing. So there is crisis. That's why you have, you know, inflation in prices of food items. It is affecting Nigerians in practically every way. But unfortunately, the government seems not to be doing enough. And let's let's you know, let's be let's be let's be specific about this. Even if, of course, you've seen changes. They've been trying, you know, lately to, of course, since uh, last year, especially with the changes. Uh, uh, of course, the change uh, 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 of as in security agents. You've seen, you know, you've seen a lot of renewal of war, and I can tell you, you know, we have monitored uh, 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 events in the in the security uh, 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 sector. I can tell you that the present chiefs are doing much more better than what we had before. So. You will have occasional things like this, not necessarily because they are not working, but because we still have loopholes that need to be blocked. And it has become a disaster before they come in. And they are, you know, the president will be remembered, one, for giving us promises, and unfortunately, he is scoring himself high on those promises. But Nigerians know by facts, by figures, by data, by the indices, that no, we can't score him high on it, not just on insecurity. I mean, not just on security that he promised us. Look at corruption. Look at the economy. So the tripod stand that this government came to power. One, you know, securities. Second, you know, two, corruption, that they will fight corruption. You know, three, economy. And unfortunately, look at the three of them. Of course, we know it's a difficult time to govern any nation. You know, globally, you can't, you can't run away from what globalization has put on us, of course. All over, whatever is happening in some part of the world affects others. Even, even you know, you, you know, even England today, they are, you know, they are getting, you know, very close to recession. So they all cry. That's why you see that the prime minister that came, you know, what's her name, you know, could not stay long. <laughs> she was kicked out. What she thought, you know, would be easy, of course, was not. However, as we know, it is difficult to govern. But we brought this upon ourselves largely because we failed to do the right things at the right time. And secondly, the you know the corruption that the you know that the problems they were going to fight before this government. I remember Stella Odua. What was the figure? Four hundred million naira. And you know we cried, we shouted, and President Jonathan, you know, the leader of our duty, took her from office. But in this government, it as if you know what they do is to turn you know a deaf ear. 
blind eye to whatever you're saying. No, regardless of how long you shout with facts and figures, 2020, we brought out data. You know, mobilization, we brought out data on corruption activities in some, in some places. We, you know, we even brought out monies, I mean, details of monies moving from government account to private individuals' account. Billions of naira, billions of naira, and the president did nothing. These guys were not chastised. And the moments you don't, you know, the moments you are rewarding indolence, the moments you are rewarding incompetency, what you will have is that you will have multiplication of that in the system. See, remember, some times ago, the president came back from a trip and he saw the former IG. Yeah, oh, he said, oh, the guy was not fast, so he didn't add flesh. So the president, according to him, his own KPI for measuring performances is that you're not getting fat. So if your KPI is wrong, so how will you be able to you know, reshuffle if you need to reshuffle? So on the stance that the president came to power, I think he has not done enough. And I don't know what legacy is going to leave for us, but it has to be about a good election. Maybe. I just want to push you further on, you know, the leadership and this issue of insecurity before we go back to Edo State to, you know, continue that conversation. Um, is it possible that these so-called terrorists, the kidnappers or whatever they would, you know, they're called, um, have taken advantage of the body language of not just government but service chiefs? and how they have dilly-dallied, because you talked about plugging these loopholes uh, to put an end to what is happening. But if these people have tested, for example, they went into the NDA and kidnapped a soldier, um, and, and we still see issues and issues in Kaduna State, but that's a whole kettle of fish on its own. Um, we've also seen these people test, and now they're in the South. Uh, well, the, the east, the southeast, is also dealing with its own uprising. If these so-called terrorists or perpetrators of violence have seen the body language of government that it only pays lip service, talks tough, but does not back it with action, who's to say that this is not going to one way or the other um, continue? Ex especially now that we're getting ready for the elections, this could also one way or the other be a dampener on the average person who we're trying to convince to come out and vote. Won't it? It's it. Uh, uh, unfortunately, you have a population uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, well, I don't want, let me be very mindful of my words, but uh, you don't really have a very informed population that take informed decision when it comes to voting. And it's cut across, whether they're educated or non educated. Today, even the noise we are shouting about some individuals. You want to ask, what did they do in their respective places? Fortunately, then all the leading, camp, because the four leading candidates, they have served in different places before. And we are not asking questions. What each, you see, if you want to employ anyone to your company, I run my organizations too. The first thing you do is the needs assessment. What do you need to be, you know, what do you need to be done in the company? What do you need somebody to come handle? And that is the first thing. So, whoever you have you want to employ must fit into the shoe of who can solve whatever is the problem, the needs assessment you have done. If so if we have done a needs assessment, number one, you know there is a great, I mean, a, a, a terrible level of insecurity in Nigeria. In this, of course, look through them. Which of them has approached this in their respective places that they have set before, holistically? Number one. But we're not even looking at that. Number two, you look at the next problem. Which of them have shown you know, capacity to tackle this problem? We are not looking at that. Mm. Most times it is rhetoric, it is you know, issues that should not even be on the table, you know, that we that will promote much more. And unfortunately, this would tell on us. If you think somebody will not get vote because his party has done badly, I mean I may be I may, you know, it's 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 so terrible that some factors may, you know, may prove you wrong. The first factor is the level of education, literacy, let me say. No, not, not the normal school, you know, you know, the school education. It has to do with voters' education on what should inform their choice of candidates. Number two, don't forget that uh, in the quality, you have a situation where money plays a lot of roles. So these guys who have stock money, they will move it into the system. 
and regardless of what you think the decision should be, they will influence. Number three, this, they have this, the, this is know, a conversation have a that we have to have person another person day. Because the same people that will not be allowed to their responsibility. Yeah, this is a conversation we have to have another day on voter oh, education. Okay, sorry. Let me land on that. The issue of voter education. Yeah, let me land another... on that please. The same people that will not be alive to their responsibility, you know, to tackle insecurity, they will be alive to support the politician to win election. Mm. Once you have the INEC, once you have the security agencies and you have money, winning election is easier okay. in Nigeria. Finally, finally, because my time is totally up. Um, a spokesperson for the government of Edo State had something to say about the recent developments. And then uh, I, I just want you to take a look at it. And then when we come back, I want to know, will we be doing the same song and dance that we did uh, during the Abuja Kaduna trail, uh, train attack? Or should we be looking forward to a better solution to the problem? But let's take a listen to what he had to say. We are pleased to say that while we were waiting for beginning this, this uh, press conference, we got a report that the suspect has been arrested, one of the suspects arrested. And, uh, and this is very good news that is helping police and the police and the security agencies with their investigation right now. The, 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 the. So I think once again we must uh, congratulate and uh, the police for the swiftness with which they attended to this security breach. And also, we're pleased to say that our local hunters and the London network, their collaboration also assisted in this, uh, this operation. And that's why we have we are recording very huge success in very short, a very short, uh, very short, very short time. So we hope this is the last time we'll have some daring people invading government infrastructure, especially train stations across the country. Well, he's saying he hopes that this is the last time that this kind of thing happens. So my question again, um, Mr. Johnson, one minute before we, run, we wrap up. Will we be doing the same song and dance, or is this just another tea party? You can't play it anywhere. If you want to sound uh, pessimistic, you will sound unpatriotic. But the fact is, by the data on ground, by the indices, I don't think this is over. And unfortunately, again, you will leave the people to pay for this. So you keep empowering the criminals against the people and the government is not helping matters. So for me, I will hit to sound terrible, but the fact is I don't think this is over. Regardless of what we say, if you don't do the right thing, you must pay for it. You will have the consequences there. You can eat your cake and have it. That is a fact. Well, I want to say thank you. Kala Wale Johnson is a public affairs analyst and he's a communications strategist. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. We're hoping that something good comes out of this and the people are freed. Oh, all right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that's the show tonight. Uh, it's Plus Politics. Don't forget, if you missed any of our shows, you can go on our YouTube page, Plus TV Africa, and subscribe so you can n never miss any of our programs. So don't forget that, you know, your PVCs are your only passports to a new Nigeria. So if you haven't picked up your PVC, go get it today. It's in your ward. It's at your registration center. And that is Plus Politics for tonight. I'm Mary Anna Kun. I'll see you tomorrow as we continue to talk for development. Good night.